Hello. Now let's talk about measuring constant currents using a DMM. A device to measure current is called an ammeter. Most, but not all, DMMs provide ammeter functionality. One inconvenient thing about measuring current is that we usually have to modify the circuit itself when we make the measurement. When measuring current, all the current that is to be measured must pass through the DMM. Therefore, when connecting the DMM as an ammeter, we usually have to break open the circuit and connect the DMM leads to the new terminals we've created. Another sort of odd thing about current measurement is that most DMMs have several different settings which can be used to measure current. We'll discuss this more at the end of the video once we have experience with just basic current measurement. In order to use the DMM as an ammeter, there are several acceptable dial positions. On this DMM, they're labeled as A, MA, and MUA. They basically change the scale on the measured current. A displays current in amperes, MA displays it in milliamperes, and mu A displays it in microamperes. We'll use the A setting for now. We also need to configure our leads for a current measurement. One terminal still gets connected to the COM port. This particular DMM has two different ports to perform current measurement. They're labeled A and mu A MA. The port must agree with the setting of the knob. Since we're using the A setting, we have to connect our other terminal to the A port on the DMM. If we were using mu A or MA, we'd use the mu A MA port. The circuit itself also needs to be set up to measure a current. We need to connect the ammeter to the circuit so that all the current which is to be measured passes through the ammeter. Let's say that we want to measure the current through the circuit that we used in our first DMM tutorial, the one on voltage measurement. An ammeter measures the current that passes through it. In order to measure the current, we must make sure that it passes through the DMM. To do this, we need to break open the circuit and place the ammeter probes in series with the source. So we're going to disconnect the voltage supply from our resistor. We'll put the ammeter probes at these two connections. Now we need to talk a little bit about the sign associated with current direction. In our circuit schematic, positive current leaves the V plus terminal. In terms of the DMM current measurement, assumed positive current enters the A terminal and leaves the COM terminal. Therefore, in order for our measured current direction to agree with the direction of the current I on our schematic, we need to connect the A terminal of the DMM here and the COM terminal of the DMM here. So this is our new circuit with the ammeter shown explicitly. As with voltage measurements, switching the terminals on the ammeter changes the sign on the measured current. Here's my original circuit. As I mentioned before, I need to disconnect V plus from the resistor in order to measure current. Now if I want positive current to be leaving the V plus terminal and entering this resistor, I need to place my amp terminal here and my COM terminal here. That closes the circuit and I get about 28 milliamps of current. If I switch the probes, that should just change the sign on my measured current. One final note on why there are several different current measurement settings and ports. There are fuses in a DMM which can burn out if too much current passes through it. The various current measurement settings on the DMM dial and ports allow different current levels to be measured without burning out a fuse. Most DMMs have settings and ports labeled A, MA, or MUA. As we've mentioned before, the setting on the dial must agree with the port into which the lead is plugged. The A port and setting allow the highest current levels but provide the least sensitivity. Currents in the milliampere, thousands of an ampere range, will tend to simply show up as zero. The MA and MUA ports provide greater sensitivity. They allow us to accurately measure relatively small currents, but they have fuses which will easily burn out at higher current levels. Burnout fuses can be replaced, but in order to avoid this, it is a good practice to first make your current measurement with the higher current setting. If this setting indicates a very low current, then switch to one of the lower current settings.